what's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we're continuing our look at the top 10 best cards in every main set of the game. Today being Shadow Spectre. <laughs> now I didn't actually plan this, it just kind of happened that way, but Shadow Spectre is the spooky set and it's the spooky month. How, how did we do that? Sometimes things just work, you know? It's, it's, just how, oh, these are filthy. What's also fun is the set kind of came out at, on like November 1st or something like that of the year it came out. So it's it's almost like the anniversary for the set as it is if you're watching this when the video airs. So that's also kind of fun, I, I guess. Thematic coincidence aside, this set gets a lot of flack for being pretty lackluster, but I think this list would kind of show you that um, those people are just silly willies. This set actually has some really good cards in it. I just think that a lot of the good cards were lower rarity. So it's not the set is bad, it just isn't worth a lot of money, which is, uh, take that how you will, I guess. So without further ado, let's get started with Shadow Spectres. Number 10 is the Sacred Noble Knight King of Arcturagus. Rank five light warrior, C monster, 2200 attack and defense. So what do? Made of two level 5 Noble Knights. Cool, I guess. It's not generic, but it is a boss monster for the Noble Knight deck, so I guess it doesn't really matter. When this card is exceeds summon, you can target up to three Noble Arms equipped cards in your graveyard, equip them to this card. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to target one monster in the field and destroy that target. And if this thing is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one level 4 or higher Noble Knight monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Okay, so that's a lot of effects for a monster to have. Especially considering the year this came out, that's actually, that's actually quite a bit. First off, when he's summoned, he just collects all the swords in the graveyard. I can't hold all the swords. <laughs> Let's just talk about how that doesn't make no sense. The man's only got two arms. What, he's got one in his teeth? I've probably never watched an episode of One Piece. Let's, and now there's too many. I, I can't start. I just can't. The reason why we care about all that is because can just muster all of the protection onto this one giant protect the castle monster. Not only that, but uh, in order to get your plays off, you might have had to equip a noble arms to one of the materials this thing, and it's going to go to the graveyard, so you're going to lose all that field advantage. So it's nice that he kind of can just scoop them all back up. Also, being able to just kind of pop one other monster in the field, it's not a quick effect, but to be able to just kind of do that is pretty solid. That's still a very good effect, even in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! The fact that it doesn't care if the monster is face up, face down, or even you or your opponent's monster is pretty nice. It, uh, the only thing it can't do is kill itself, which, you know, he can't commit Sudoku, and that's fine. <laughs> it's not a samurai, he's a, he's a western knight. Very strong XC monster, gives Noble Knights a good boss monster. Uh, he also has a giant sticker on his face that says, please kaiju me. Number 9 is Nintendo 64 Ronin Raccoon Sendeyu. Number 64! Rank 2 Earth Beast Monster with, what is this thing? 1000 attack and defense. That's not big number, not even close. Made of two level 2 beast type monsters. Oh, very nice! Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to special summon a. Oh boy, Kagamusha Raccoon Token. <laughs> big Bald Tanuki Token. Beast type Earth level 1 with mystery attack and zero defense. The token's attack power is equal to the monster on the field whose attack power is the current highest. If it's a tie, you get to pick one. I don't know why you would need to pick anything, it's just equal to the highest attack. That is just the biggest number. I don't- that's a- that's weird. Why do they need to say that? Oh, whatever. Why you control another beast type monster, a Sundayu cannot be destroyed by card effects or battle. Neat. The, the token bestows him his own protection. Combo, I guess. Time to execute my combo! Level 2 Beasts is like a real deck. It's been a real deck for a very long time because a lot like dinosaurs, there's enough generic level 2 beast support where it's not really an archetype, but it is a coherent strategy if you mix all of these things together. Especially now that we have Melfi's, which kind of end up being the main uh, glue for the engine now. So giving the level 2 Beasts a way of making a giant big number token in order to beat over problem monsters is a very interesting and relevant hole to fill out their extra deck. You know, you're, you're not really doing anything world ending here, just making big token, but hey, sometimes that really does solve a problem. Number eight's a combo, it's Mythic Tree Dragon and Mythic Water Dragon. Mythic Tree Dragon's a level four Earth Dragon, Mythic Water Dragon's a level eight Water Dragon. Mythic Tree Dragon says once per turn you can target a Water Dragon on the field, that you control, this thing's level becomes the level of the targeted dragon. 
Oh, okay, so Mythic Tree Dragon can target Mythic Water Dragon, making them both level 8. I bet I can make a rank 8 play with that. But how do you get the Water Dragon on field? Well, Mythic Water Dragon says if you control an Earth Monster, you can just kind of special summon it. So that solves that problem. Oh, that's a combo! Alright, so we're off to a good start. And by good start, I mean holy bricks for days. That's not a combo. Obviously, the way you do it is you normal the tree, special the water, use the tree's effect, make them both eight, go into Holopolis or uh, Draglon or uh, what's another rank eight? Tachyon Dragon, something like that, I don't know. You know who played this? Dragon Rulers. Because by this point, Dragon Rulers were, were hit on the balance a couple times and uh, the deck was still, you know, in its death throes. It did not want to give up, so it just kept changing the engine in order to fill out the holes. And at one point, Mythic Rulers was actually a deck, so uh, that's neat. And again, showing you that this set has a lot of really, really good cards in it. They're all just very low rarity. They're all like commons and stuff. It's very strange. Oh, here you go. Number seven is number 46, Dragalon. Death to the ditches you burn, to the witches you stab in the back of my Dragulon. Do it, baby. Rank eight light dragon monster. You can you can make it with the things we were just talking. I think I literally just said that, didn't I? Made of two level eight dragon monsters. It ain't generic, but it's dragons. It's generic enough, right? That's, that's the only thing making these anyway. F's in the chat for gimmick puppets. Once per turn, if you control no other monsters, you can detach one material from this card and activate one of these three effects. Ooh, options. That's neat. Special summon one dragon type monster from your hand. <laughs> wow, it's a good thing that has this effect because dragons have a real hard time special summoning themselves, especially from places like the hand and graveyard. <laughs> Target one dragon type monster your opponent controls and take control of it. Oh, that's permanent. Ooh. So if you're in a weird dumb mirror match, just take your opponent's crap feels good to me or you know make that one blue eyes player at locals just feel real bad about himself <laughs> Dragon type monsters your opponent controls cannot activate their effects until the end of your opponent's next turn. Ooh! Gives you something to go into going first. You can use this if you're playing a mirror match and you know it's a mirror match, like it's game two or something, or you're just playing the odds because that's your current meta or whatever. <laughs> or you cheat! There's always that option. Because you know what? Dragons do like to special summon themselves. A lot of times it's inherent, but even still, locking out your opponent of all of their dragon's effects would really do limit their options. So you know what? This is a pretty solid card in a mirror match. Number six is Return of the Monarchs, a continuous spell card. Nice. The one funny thing about Monarch is that uh, the real Return of the Monarchs was when the structure deck came out. So this is more like the preamble of the Monarchs. That does not mean that Monarch isn't a good card. You cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck. That sounds like a problem. I assure you it is not. Because if monarchs don't play an extra deck traditionally, so that might as well not be there. When you tribute summon a monster, you know, the gimmick of the deck, activate one of these effects. Ooh, options again. Add from your deck to your hand one monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense with a different name than the tribute summoned monster. Or you can add one with 2800 attack and 1000 defense. Same, same restriction. All right, that sounds like really very, very specific. And it is, and it is. Most of the monarchs are either at 24 or 2800 attack power with 1000 defense. Why this doesn't just say monarch monster, I am unsure because by this card's language, I think you can also search like most of the Klees, which I, I, I could not think was intentional. That's quite odd and, and, and strange. I'm sure you can look up on like EDO Pro, all the things you can get with this. I'm sure some of them are just some rando monsters, but you know what? Hey, they wrote it that way, so let's use it. The tribute summon monster must be face up in order to activate and resolve this effect. So I guess you can't tribute set or whatever, or floodgate trap hold maybe. It's a continuous spell card that allows you to search the rest of your deck. Seems pretty solid. The only downside is that the deck needs to be kind of semi-functioning for the this card to even be able to activate. If you can't tribute summon a monarch because you bricked, then I guess you can't use this to unbrick your hand and that's kind of unfortunate, but it is still an important piece to their strategy. Number five is Ghost Trick Alucard. Alucard is Dracula backwards. He shouldn't die. 
Yes, fuck you. Rank 3 Dark Zombie Monster. 1800 attack, 1600 defense with the following effect. Monsters your opponent controls cannot target face up ghost trick monsters or face down defense position monsters for attacks except ghost trick alucard. I bet you forgot it did that. It actually says except this one, so presumably if you had two, I don't think your opponent can declare an attack. <laughs> That's cute. You can attach one material from this card to target one face down card your opponent controls and destroy it. It is not face down back row or face down monster, it is face down, <laughs> period. So you can pop monsters or back row. That's kind of nice. This card actually saw play even outside of Ghost Tricks because the ability to pop back row or a monster you've book a moon or something is frankly kind of nice and it does come up. Nowadays, I think we have better options, but it's still a pretty solid little rank three. And inside a ghost trick strategy, it's, it's still one of the most important cards in your extra deck. <laughs> that deck actually puts your opponent's monsters face down as part of its win condition. So Alucard does have more synergy in that deck because he can more likely be able to do something other than just popping back row. Being a rank three doesn't hurt him either. Number four, mistake. Oh, this channel was a mistake. You said it, not me. Continuous Trap card. Oh, oh no. Your player can add cards from their deck to their hands except by drawing them. Oh. This floodgate does not allow either player to search cards from their deck. You need to hard draw them or tough titty. Now, that doesn't sound like it's necessarily a problem for certain decks, and it, it is indeed not, but there are some strategies, frankly, most of the good ones, that, you know, don't really care what five cards they open with, because those five cards just give them to the other five cards that they actually need to play. You know, because good decks are consistent and do searching things. This card basically says if you didn't open your combo, I, I guess you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so fun. But we do get that good Sangan card lore on this thing. He's getting on the bus. Look how cute he is. He, he doesn't realize he's about to go to jail. I like when we get card lore for Sangan. He's he cute. Number three is a card I don't know how to pronounce. Here we go. Mikazuchi. Mikbuji Michu Chu. Oh boy. Are you having a stroke? It's Mikazuchi. Mikazuchi. Level 4 Light Beast Warrior Monster. 1900 attack, 1500 defense. Why do? When a Beast Warrior type Bujin monster is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. Basically meaning if your Yamato gets killed, you can just slap this thing down to immediately replace it. And then, once per turn, during the end phase, if a Bujin monster is sent from your hand to the graveyard, while you controlled this card face up on the field, add one Bujin Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. Neat. Replace the uh, hand trap you just used. Probably crane. I I suppose. Can only control one of these things. So yeah, basically, like I said before, it's just in case your Yamato dies. Uh, fun fact: it looks like Chaz Princeton. Like all the all like the level four Bujins like look like a GX character. But why though? All right, number two, Divine Knight, Dragon Knight, Divine Dragon, Divine Knight, man, Felgrand, Divine Dragon Knight, Felgrand, Rank 8, Light Warrior XC Monster, 2800 attack, 1800 defense, what do? Generic Rank 8, two level 8s. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card to target one monster on the field. Its effects are negated, but it is unaffected by other card effects for the rest of the turn. This is one of my favorite types of effects in Yugi Mans. There's a little give and take here. It shields one monster in the field from practically every other card effect in the game, but has the downside of negating its effects. You can target one of your own monsters in order to, I don't know, protect it from a dark hole or some hoo-ha, or you can use it on one of your opponent's monsters in order to stop one of their combo plays. But who knows, the card is so versatile, maybe the turning off one of your card effects is the thing that you need, because your monster has some sort of negative downside you're trying to avoid. Or maybe making your opponent's monster unaffected by card effects is the advantage you need, because they're trying to equip a bunch of stuff, or... Uh, target to, you know, raise its level to, to exceed summon or some hoo-ha, whatever. It's him being this versatile, which makes this card just a very interesting extra deck monster, and at 2800 attack means he's at least got enough attack power to make your opponent think a little bit. Yeah, he just can't normal summon something and smash over it. All right, honorable mention. Today's honorable mention is Kidmoto Dragon. Why? Because he's super cute. He's pretty good in Duel Links. If he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a dragon from your hand. Neat. But you can't do your battle phase this turn, but nah, who cares? It's a combo extender or whatever. Very nice. And we got a dishonorable mention. Day Knight Greffer. Level 4 Light Warrior Monster. He's a Gemini. So that immediately makes him bad. I'm sorry, Gemini fans. It's... 
It's the way of the world. I'm sorry, your monster literally would need a Gemini effect that is like, win the duel for it to be worth ever normal summoning a monster twice. Unless you knew what a Gemini monster was, that sentence doesn't even make any sense to you. Normal summon a monster twice, how the hell do you do that? It's already on the board. <laughs> Good question. I don't think it actually makes any sense. You're not normal summoning it. You're just blowing your normal summon to activate its effect. But I guess that also doesn't make sense. So that this is how they chose to word it. It doesn't matter. The card's bad. If you do manage to Gemini summon this stupid thing during your end phase, you can add an equip spell from your graveyard to your hand. Isn't this guy literally on like an uh, on like a, a quick play spell card that does like the same thing? <laughs> Gemini stink. Do do do. Gemini stink. Do do do. All right, number one, it's another combo entry. White Dragon Weaver Buster and Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. And just like these two are partners, I am also partners with TCG Player. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't remember which was the last one that I did. Uh, so I'm just gonna restart the cycle. <laughs> so if this was supposed to be like Meta Mats or your play mat, I'm, I, I, oops. Use my link in the description below to buy uh, expensive cardboard. We're actually having events now. They're not, I don't think there are any major events, but we are having locals and stuff. So, uh, and we can at least be in the same room with each other now. And uh, I think at this point, if you were interested in doing like remote duels, you've probably at this point got the stuff for it. So I think Yu-Gi-Oh is starting to, starting to, you know, ch chug back into being a, a thing again. So that's fun, I guess. So, you know, go buy cards, you, you, you cards to play. But right, uh, Wiver Buster and Collapse Serpent are a fantastic little set of level four monsters. They are the baby chaos monsters, as it were. And uh, yeah, they came out in Shadow Spectres. They're very strong cards. People think the set's bad. No, these were just commons. <laughs> the set's just not worth a lot. Doesn't make it bad. And they basically have the exact same effect and summoning condition, they're just a little bit flipped. Neither can be normal summoner set. Wiverbuster says you must banish a dark monster from your graveyard to special summon it, and if it leaves the field and goes to the graveyard, you can add the Collapse Serpent from your deck to your hand. Conversely, Collapse Serpent says you must banish a light monster from your graveyard, and if it, it is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get the, the Wiverbuster. Which am I on? Wiver, Collapse Serpent, Wiver, okay. <laughs> Keeping them straight. A nice combo. That sounds like combo material to me. Special summon monsters that search a thing when 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 they go to the graveyard. Link climbing, synchro plays. You got you got options. It's really kind of crazy to think that these were just commons. These are legitimately powerful little level four monsters. Being level four, light and dark themselves. Wow, it's almost like they they want dragons to be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff's not fair, man. Sometimes don't get a chance. Others just get all the all the support in the world. Feels bad, man. All right, guys, that was Shadow Specters. I hope you enjoyed the list. Uh, it's good to be back in the swing of things. I, I took a nice little break for, for Comic-Con there, but you know, I was kind of nice not having to edit for like all of my Sunday, but you know what? I missed you guys, so I'm glad to be in the swing of things. I don't quite know what we're doing next week yet, so get on, on that Discord. Link in the description below so you guys can yell at me, dance monkey dance, and then give me a list idea, and we will, we will make that. So remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.